Okay, hello again. Part 5. Holy moly. So I know the last part was kind of a train wreck. Um, we're going to try to do a little better this time. We're going to try and keep this simple. We're not going to get bogged down in theory or audio conversions or anything like that. And hopefully we'll do something nice and pretty and visual you can see here. And by pretty and visual, I mean I'm going to draw another rectangle. But <clears throat> give me the benefit of the doubt on this and we'll see how it goes. All right, let's see here. Where did we leave off? All right, so last time we were here, we were way, way in the weeds on trying to get audio to play a little bit at a time, which was this right here. Okay, um, we're going to come back and do all these fix me's, but we've eaten enough vegetables for a little bit, so we're just going to go and we'll pay off that technical debt next time. And for now, let's just get right down to business here. So what we are going to need is um, a, a, a slider, a volume control. So we're going to do something really simple. We're not doing anything fancy here. We just need to get a, sli a slider type of thing on the screen, some sort of user interface we can use. So let's continue our atrocious uh, wave of global variables here. Static. Um, all we need here, we'll just we'll make this a float. I'm feeling good about it. Float volume uh, volume slider value. Sure, why not? Let's call that one. Now, when we get down to this, we're going to use a floating point number for this, but we're thinking about like percentage. Zero is 0%, zero one is 100%. And we're going to clamp it in that range, and that's going to keep things pretty simple here. Because the nice thing about doing it, of doing percentages as a floating point like that, is that to get the percentage of something, all you have to do is multiply it, which is super easy. So we'll, we're going to we're going to go with that. But right now, we need to add some drawing in here. So down here, we have our rewind rectangle, our pause rectangle. We're going to add one more rect to this. We're going to call this thing, for now, one more volume rectangle. There's pause rectangle. Let me get these here. There we go. Call this volume rectangle. And let's see. These are at uh, 400. So it's x, y, and width and height, but we're going to want this one to be longer across the bottom of the screen. So let's do, do 100, and how big do we make this window? This window is 640 by 480, so we'll just do, do from 100 to, let's just make it, let's make it 500. So do 100, and it'll be, I can't do math in my head. Let's make this 450. Let's put it there. So X and Y there. It's near the bottom of the screen, near that starts at the left, and we'll make it 500 wide and 20 across. Let's just call it that. I don't know. Uh, 20 vertically. And we're going to do nothing else to this right now. All we've done is just add that and draw it. And we're doing nothing else yet. Let's see if it'll build. Okay, well, we, we haven't actually hooked up this flow yet, so we're just going to ignore that. Just not my usual policy, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. So, yep. Okay, it's a little lower, and I want it kind of looks like a frowny face. I felt like this at the end of the last video. Um, I want that to be a little further over and perhaps a bit more centered. But we're not going to get too hung up on this. But let's try and do that real quick here. So, okay. So half of do you know how to center something? Have you ever done this before? Let's say we're going to hard code this for now because I'm bored. We want it to be 500, so it would be whatever the thing you want to center it in is minus the length of the thing you have divided by 2. You, you just learn that over time. It's just how things go. So, And the height seems, no, let's make this 400. It was a little low, I felt. 20 was fine. Let's build that one more time. Let's see if it works. Yeah, well, it's centered now. Now I don't look any less grumpy with our little face. Uh, as we can see patterns and everything, that's the amazing thing about the human brain. Okay, good. So, now we have a thing. And now we want to know where it's at. So let's do this. Let's add a thing for an event. SDL mouse... Is it motion? Mouse motion? Let's find out. Yes, mouse motion. Haha, I got it. Got it right on the first try. How cool is that? It's called SDL mouse motion. 
Oh my gosh, pull it together, right? Mouse motion. There we go, mouse motion event. Okay, so all this event does is it tells you, you know, what window the mouse is moving in, uh, which mouse, or if it was a touch thing, don't worry about that. The current button state, which we're going to definitely want in a moment here, and most notably, where the mouse cursor is at the point where it moved. So these are the things we need right here, these three magic things. So, okay, what we want to know is if, I guess we'll need a point, just like the mouse button down thing. Um, you could also do some magic in mouse button down, but we want to be able to slide the mouse across this, uh, uh, across this slider, because it's called a slider. Um, so just getting the mouse button down wouldn't be enough, because we're not concerned about the click, we're concerned about what the mouse is doing while the mouse button is down. So we're going to say, this is an E button, we're in a different part of this, because it's different events, emotion. Emotion, the things you feel. Um, then we want to say, I'll take this whole thing here. So first off, we want to ignore this mouse motion unless the mouse motion is inside volume rack, inside the slider. Inside the volume. I feel like this should be in quotes too, slider. There you go. Um, so if it's in there and Let's not stop yet. And emotion state. What what is state in this case? Is it button state? Mouse down. Somewhere in here. They tell you what this means. Button index state. Excuse me a moment here. There we are. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so we just want to know if this button is down. So this all is just turns out to be. So um, in this event, this state field is actually a bit field, and it has a bit set for each possible mouse button. So the first bit is, is the left mouse button, and the second bit, I think, is the right mouse button. Uh, I don't remember which is which because we have magic macros for that. So, okay, so, and emotion state is pressed inside that. So since it's a bit mask, we're going to do a, a bitwise and say this doesn't need to be inside the thing. So there we go. Okay, so so what we're saying is if the mouse cursor is inside of that volume slider rectangle and the mouse button is down then we will treat it as if it's sliding. And that's not entirely perfect, but it's going to be close enough um, if I did this right. Let's find out. Uh, our good friend Pranef will let us know. Sliding, whoops, at percent %d by percent %d. I wish that this stuff would stop bothering me on my phone. I don't know if you hear that vibrating in the background. So let's see, and we want to be at point x, point y, and we'll see what it does. Why not? Break, never forget that in your case statements or misery will ensue. Okay, so all we're checking here is just if there's a mouse moving inside the slider and we're holding the mouse button, the left mouse button down while that's happening. Let's see if it works. Yeah, okay. Let's build that and see if it works. The wrong file, right, wrong directory, okay. Okay, let's watch for standard out right here. So I'm not holding the mouse button down. Here comes the mouse button. I'm clicking it. It's not doing anything. Inside the slider. There it goes. You can see and stops from here. And it picks up so we can see exactly where we are. Good. That's very nice. I like that. Good. Um, let's see. Okay, wait. No, do I have an editor open? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, okay, so now... We know, come back, here we go, where'd you go? I lost it, I keep jumping around. So the, the, the number five on my keypad will jump you to the start of the file and occasionally hit by accident and then it's, you know, hilarity ensues. I can't figure out where I am. So we need to know how far into this uh, rectangle we are on uh, horizontally into it. So this is going to be, let's get a floating point version of point X. And then let's say const float 
percent equals, let's see, the percentage of it would be, oh, we need to adjust this, hang on a second, um, minus, where does this start, uh, volume rect x, okay, because this is somewhere inside the window, but we actually want it to start with zero at the start of the rectangle. Um, so we subtract where that is. So in theory, this should now start at zero and go to the length of the, the length in pixels of that rectangle. So we're going to take that, and the percentage of this will be we are this x divided by the entire. Let's make that a float too. Just although this will promote to float. Sometimes I like to be explicit about it. Volume rect width. So. Uh, percentage is just the value you have divided by the total possible thing will give you between 0 and 1, assuming that your number is not bigger than it, but that's a different thing entirely. Um, or negative, you know, math is hard. So we'll take the, the, the width of this rectangle divided by how far into it from left to right we are, and that should give us a value between 0 and 1. And let's just percent. Let's see what that looks like. We'll cast that to an end. We don't really care about the. Oh, I guess that won't work. We'd have to. Oh, yeah, I guess it will if you do this. Okay, percent times a hundred. Come back. Okay, there we go. Good. Yep, good. All right. Let's see what that looks like when we build it. I gotta fix that. Still okay. So here we go when I run in here. Down here should be zero. This should be 100%. Let's see. Just, okay, so there we are at zero. Yep, and it's creeping. The percent is creeping up. There we go. And it clamps out right around 99 because we can't quite hit that pixel. It rounds a little bit. But, you know, we'll call 99% close enough for now. Uh, in fact, what we'll probably do, the reason you couldn't get to 100, I think, was because we... Just clamp this to an end, which will just chop off the fractional part of it. But what we actually want to do is round, SDL round, to the closest integer. And you can really be cheap about this and just add 0 0.5 to the thing and then cast it to end. But we'll just be more explicit here for now. Let's see. So now we get 0 still down there. Yep, 0%. And we get here. 100%. There we go. There, you have the full range now. You don't have to have less than that. Okay, good. We no longer need this printf, but we'll comment it out in case we need to come back to it. Okay. Good. So now, we need to know what the current volume is, which is this magic thing I put up here. Volume slider value. We have this set to 1 at first, which is just full gain. Uh, uh, gain being just like what you multiply the thing by to get your volume. So volume slider value is just going to be a percent. We don't even need this percent anymore. Here, we'll just do that. I'll stick that in there in case we ever want to come back to this. Okay. Volume slider value. So now, first off, when I compile this, it's no longer complaining because we're now using that variable, so it's not complaining that it's not being used. Good, and then now we just need to do something with this information. So by default, things will play at full volume because we have this one, and the way that you change the volume of something, the way you adjust its gain, is you just simply multiply it. It's very simple. Uh, if you multiply it by zero, the, uh, the sound sample will be zero, which is silence. Uh, if you multiply it by one, the sound sample doesn't change because anything multiplied by one is itself, so you just get no change in volume. And if you multiply it by two, it goes up to, um, if you multiply it by two, it will double in volume. In fact, that's a good point. We Well, let's just keep this at 100 for now, and we'll, we'll adjust that in a moment so we can make it louder than the original. Um, bu -bu 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 -bum. Okay, so where we want to do this is if you recall in here, we took all this Herculean effort yesterday to get this thing to play, just to feed a little bit of the audio to 
the audio device at a time instead of dumping the whole wave to it at once. So we're going to continue to do that, but this is where the magic's going to happen. We have this converted buffer, right? And this is data in floating point format uh, that we then feed to the device. Um, but we went through all this effort not just so that we could guarantee that whatever audio file format the wave file was in, not only could we guarantee that it would play correctly on the device, it's so that we could definitely have it in floating point so we can play with it. So here we're going to do that. So we first off need to know this, new bytes, it says we have that much remaining. Okay, so we know, <laughs> once we put error checking in here, har har, um, how many bytes of audio we got back out of this audio stream. So we're just going to do for size t i equals zero. Um, I get, I, I go through different religious phases about size t. Sometimes I feel like you should always use it, and sometimes it's like, why am I wasting my time with this one mostly standard data type for no good reason. Anyway, so we're going to start with that, and we're going to go, well, i is less than, in fact, let's not even do it, because then I'm going to have to Visual Studio would complain that there are different data types when we compare here. So, well, i is less than new bytes divided by size of float. Because remember, new bytes is bytes, but each byte, e each sample is a floating point value, which is four bytes. So, you have to do this division. And some people will get mad I'm doing that division every time, although I gotta be honest, I would hope any optimizing compiler would slide that out of there. Uh, but let's. Let's be a bro about it. We'll do this. Const int samples equals new bytes divided by size of float. So now we're not talking in bytes anymore. We're talking in samples, individual pieces of the waveform that we're going to give to the audio device. Um, note that we are not talking in sample frames, which would be, in, in a stereo setup, it would be two samples. Two samples mushed together is a sample frame. And everyone disagrees about what these terms should be, but that's the ones that we are going with for the purpose of this discussion. So if you hear me say that, that's what's going on. Since we're applying this volume to all the channels the same, left, right, quad, whatever the heck uh, channels you have in this wave file, uh, or in this case, it's always stereo, we don't care about sample frames. We care about the individual samples in. So we do not divide that into sample frames by dividing it by the number of channels. So we do each sample, each floating point value we're going to do this on. Have I said that enough times? I think I have. OK. And since we own converted buff, we don't have to make a copy of this. We can just work right out of it. So converted buff for i, and this is this simple. Oh, this is a floating point value. Whoops. OK, so hang on a second. Let's do something about that, too. Float pointer sample make this num samples because I'm about to call this other thing samples and that would be very confusing. Samples equals float pointer converted buffer. Since we're no longer dealing with bytes, we're now treating this as a collect an array of floating point values. We're just gonna we're just gonna cast it. Why not? So no samples on each sample in this array, we multiply it by volume slider value. And then after we've processed that array by adjusting the volume of each individual sample in it, we send that whole buffer, samples, actually, converted buffer is the same pointer, so we can just do that. That's fine. We send that many bytes in the converted buffer, which was, has now had its volume adjusted, its gain adjusted, to the audio device in little tiny chunks. Let's build that and see what happens. OK, let's see. Now, I got rid of this stuff over here. Let's see, we should still be at 100% and playing uh, the default thing, the, the, the uh, living proof song. Here it comes. I hear nothing, nothing at all. Why am I hearing nothing? Oh, my volume's muted. Let's try this again. It'll be more dramatic. Yeah, OK. <laughs> nope, come back. Where'd you go? The digital output, well, that would explain that. Hold that thought for audacity. Nothing is helpful here. Settings, that's what we wanted. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's that's not going to work for me. I need built-in audio. There we go. Uh, you know, as you can see, we prepare very carefully for all, the, all of these videos. OK. Here's the music. That's what you expect to hear. That's good. 
and I'm gonna let that play through. Well, I'm gonna hit rewind. Rewind so works. See if the volume works. It's getting quieter. It's getting louder. I love it. I love it very much. Let's get something a little longer because that's only like 10 seconds of audio. All right, back to Kevin Hartnell again, who we're starting to love here for being Creative Commons. Thank you very much, good sir. Let's go back to Razor Strap here. Play, please. Where'd you go? Does anyone hear music? I don't hear music. Where'd my podcast theme go? Maybe that'll do better. Oh, there it is. I must have missed the pause button. Sorry about that. Okay. Anyway, volume down. There you go. All right, we have a volume control. How cool is that? Okay. Um, so we're at 20 minutes, so let's not do much more on this. Let's just have the success of this, but let's try and make one little cute thing about this while we're here. This volume rectangle that we draw for the slider, let's try to imply how far into this we are. So let's make the render color. Let's draw that rectangle there. And then let's set the render color to, I don't know, let's call it blue. Red, green, blue, alpha, done. OK, so, so we set that. And let's make one more rectangle here. Volume, we'll call it knob. Why not? Knob. Const SDL rect volume knob. We're going to calculate this every frame because it might change for now. We might get fancier with this later, but for now, this is good. So we'll do volume rect has to start at the same point as that. Plus, here's where it gets fancy. Okay. Plus, okay, hang on. Volume rect ec plus volume rectangle with times, where, what did I call this thing? Volume slider value. Volume slider. You know what? Let's not even do that. that. That's silly. Let's not do that. This is a bad way to do this. I changed my mind. Come back here. Volume knob. Let's put you up here with everything else. And we'll do... This isn't going to be cons, so we'll do that. And then we'll just do a steel mem copy, which is just mem copy, but this guarantees it always works no matter what your C library is. Or if you're on Windows, you don't have to link to the C runtime at all because SDL can handle it all for you, um, which is done for a lot of historical reasons on Windows. But all right, volume knob. Let's copy volume rect into there so we get most of the information we need is already there. So SDL rect. OK. Uh, and then in here, say let's make sure the volume knob oops x is all the way up let's do volume knob width let's make the width I don't know let's make it 20 why not let's do that and the volume knob x is going to be volume rec width volume rect x plus the width. So we're all the way, the, we went from the one end of the thing all the way to the other end of it by adding width. And then we're going to subtract whatever we set this knob, this little doohickeys width to. So it's all the way at the end, but it doesn't overflow the edge of it. So yay, good. Uh, width x, I guess really we didn't need a mem copy here at all. We just need to do. Height, volume, rect height, because they're the same. We need a semicolon, gets me every time. And y will be the same. We don't need a mem copy on that. That's fine. OK, so we got that. Cool. All right, the volume knob is there. It's going to draw in a different color, which is this guy on top of the volume rectangle. So now we need. One more thing in here, we need to decide what this is changing to. So if we have a point inside the rectangle, okay, so 
let's change this here, volume, knob, whenever we slide the knob, x equals, we'll, we'll, we'll set the knob to whatever this pointer, whatever the point in the thing is. So that'll be that point x minus volume knob, volume knob, volume knob with divided by 2. So the, the, the knob will center on uh, wherever we move the mouse to there. So we'll do that. And we have to do one more thing here. We need to make sure that if volume knob x is less than uh, volume slider x, then just make sure that's clamped to it. In fact, we can just do this. Knob x equals SDL max, whichever is bigger between what it is now and volume slider x. Cool. This is a macro. It's like the usual max macro. Just, you know, be gentle and don't do calculations in it. Cool. Okay, so that'll get us that. And then we also need to do min on this. So whichever is less between uh, the point, the location of it, and volume slider, slider with, I feel like I messed something up here, but I guess we'll see what happens in a moment. Volume slider with, that would be all the way to the end, minus volume not width. So this is a lot of calculation to say, don't let this thing go past the end of the slider rectangle. Famous last words. Let's see if it works. I don't know. I don't know. see what happens, I guess. Uh, oops, a couple mistakes got to fix. Volume slider. Oh, this was called volume. Can't spell volume slider. is actually called volume rect right now. Rectangle. Although it wrecked me. That's Okay, good. There, I like that better. Let's see if it works. All right, here we go. Let's play. There we go. There we go. I met a woman one night crying back in her tears of clothes wet. As you can see, this is not entirely keeping up with my, uh, with my mouse cursor. And there's reasons for that which we'll get to in another video, but we're at 27 minutes, so it's time to call it a night here. Look at that, we added volume control to the thing, and it works. Oh, and it wasn't miserable like yesterday. How exciting. Okay, let's get out while we're ahead. Thank you all for being here. I will see you next time.